What if I told you I had a conversation with God? What if I told you that I went through the most excruciating experience of my entire life? And I met God. I pleaded my case and he listened. Well, that's why I'm here. Back in 2005, I fell in love. And that love gave birth to my daughter. Sure, having a baby at 19 wasn't part of the plan, but it happened. I'm from a family that is headed by a single parent. Yes, I was, born, I was raised by a Kosa woman, a very difficult Kosa woman. And if you're South African, you know you know, if you know. I had disappointed her. And I remember my daughter must have been about two months. She threw a 50 red note in my face and said, girl, you need a job. Back in those days, when you looked for a job, you had to buy the Star newspaper with a telecom prepaid card. You would search through the paper, find something that you like or that is of interest to you, and you'd have to start dialing. And that's exactly what I did. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, I am ushered into the world of work. Back in those days, I do not think that the corporate South Africa was ready for millennials such as myself and what we were bringing to the table. I worked my way up, started off as a call center agent, Two to three years later, I had managed to secure a cushy job as, a, as an account manager for one of the biggest clients we had in my company. But I grew tired. I was unhappy. I had made peace with what had happened in my life earlier. All I wanted to do was to make my mother proud, and I believe I had accomplished that. I grew tired of waking up each and every day, contributing to the growth of somebody else's dream, as though I don't have any dreams of my own. I had had it. And being the person that I am, I decided I was going to do something about it. I had to. A part of me was dying each and every day. So I packed my bags. I did not discuss it with anyone. I did not want anybody to convince me otherwise. My mind was made up. A friend of mine and I left Johannesburg for Cape Town. I left Johannesburg for Cape Town because at that time, the film industry in Cape Town was booming. And I wanted to be in the film industry. I wanted to be in the media industry. Flip, give me anything. Anything in the creative space. I remember as a child, you know, I always had dreams of becoming an author, a script writer. I'm a creative kind of person. And my kind of cut would never fit into corporate South Africa. So I packed up. I left. Had no prospects had no place to stay, had no money, <laughs> had no job. But what I knew was that there was absolutely no way that I was going to fail. There was no way I was going to fail. That was the amount of confidence I had. I was chasing a dream after all. And I had no idea that those were the building blocks of what would soon become a nightmare one gloomy afternoon I I had had a very very difficult day at work yes I had managed to find a job in my industry in my chosen field and I was doing exactly what I wanted I had put it out there in the universe and the universe gave me exactly what I was looking for Sure, I had a very difficult boss. I mean, she was so difficult to please. 
she would send me a dozen emails and she'd be sitting right across me and she wouldn't say a thing. It wasn't the most pleasant environment, but I was exactly where I wanted to be. A friend of mine called and she made me aware that she had left her wallet in my car. We then decided, oh, you know what? We'll just get together after work and I'd give her a wallet and I'd drop her off at home. And that's exactly what we did. After picking her up from work, I, I had this feeling that just said to me, hurry up, do whatever it is that you need to do. Just get back home. So as I, as, as I drove, I was a little bit distracted because I couldn't understand this feeling that just said, do what you need to do. Just make sure that you get home as quickly as possible. We got to a house parked right outside her lawn and spoke for a couple of minutes. And as we were about to get out of the car, two, I can't actually even say they were men. These were, these were young boys. They, they approached one on each side of the car. Armed. I, I wasn't given the time to think. I wasn't given the time to act react all i heard were bullets flying bullets flying i felt them pierce through my body one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight. And I was pulled out of the car and my body hit the tarred road. I had screeches of the car tires as the car moved back. And it moved forward. And I heard this crushing sound. And those were my bones breaking. That very car had just driven over me. And I laid there. I felt no pain. The, the stars looked brighter, the air cleaner, the atmosphere still. And I saw God's face and I asked him, is this it? Is this how it all ends? What about my dreams? What about my visions? What about the souls that I still need to touch? The difference that I need to make in the world? The countries that I need to visit? What about my daughter? And I woke up in ICU. That moment symbolized a very powerful time in my life. I was victorious. I had overcome. Although a part of me died, another resurrected. And I remember Everybody around me making a fuss, the doctors, the nurses, my family. And I was told that the chances of living a full life hanged somewhat in the balance. And I swore at that moment that I would prove all of them wrong. 
because I woke up on that bed. I fought. And I fought a good fight. And it is 10 years later. And I continue to fight. Continue your fight. <laughs>